Seems right that we stand, I think, please. The cross of Christ, the cross on which the saviour of the world was hung. Please sit for our first reading. Isaiah chapter 53 verses three to six, the suffering servant. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Yet it was our weaknesses he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We have left God's path to follow our own, yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. Thanks be to God. We pray together. Almighty Father, look with mercy on this your family, for which our Lord Jesus Christ was content to be betrayed, given up into the hands of wicked men, and to suffer death upon the cross, who is now alive and glorified with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's stand and sing, My Song is Love Unknown.
Please have a seat for the first of the readings from Matthew. The second reading is from Matthew chapter 26, verses 36 to 56. Jesus prays in Gethsemane and his betrayal and arrest. Then Jesus went with them to the olive grove called Gethsemane, and he said, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and Zebedee's two sons, James and John, and he became anguished and distressed. He told them, my soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He went on a little farther and bowed his, with his face to the ground, praying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Then he returned to the disciples and found them asleep. He said to Peter, Couldn't you watch with me even one hour? Keep watch and pray so that you will not give in to temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Then Jesus left them a second time and prayed, My father, if this cup cannot be taken away unless I drink it, your will be done. When he returned to them again, he found them sleeping, for they couldn't keep their eyes open. So he went to pray a third time, saying the same things again. Then he came to the disciples and said, Go ahead and sleep. Have your rest. But look, the time has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Up, let's be going. Look, my betrayer is here. And even as Jesus said this, Judas, one of the twelve disciples, arrived with a crowd of men armed with swords and clubs. They'd been sent by the leading priests and elders of the people. The traitor, Judas, had given them a prearranged signal. You will know which one to arrest when I greet him with a kiss. So Jesus, Jesus came, Judas came straight to Jesus. Greetings, Rabbi, he exclaimed and gave him the kiss. Jesus said, my friend, go ahead and do what you have come for. Then the others grabbed Jesus and arrested him. But one of the men with Jesus pulled out his sword and struck the high priest's slave, slashing off his ear. Put away your sword, Jesus told him. Those who use the sword will die by the sword. Don't you realize that I could ask my father for thousands of angels to protect us and he would send them instantly? But if I did, how would the scriptures be fulfilled that describe what must happen now? Then Jesus said to the crowd, am I some dangerous revolutionary that you come with swords and clubs to arrest me? Why didn't you arrest me in the temple? I was there teaching every day. But this is all happening to fulfill the words of the prophets as recorded in the scriptures. At that point, all the disciples deserted him and fled. Let's stand and sing the sacred head surrounded by crown of piercing thought.
sit for the third reading. The third reading is from Matthew, chapter 26, verses 57 to 75. Jesus before the Jewish high council and Peter's denial. Then the people who had arrested Jesus led him to the home of Caiaphas, the high priest, where the teachers of religious law and the elders had gathered. Meanwhile, Peter followed him at a distance and came to the high priest's courtyard. He went in and sat with the guards and waited to see how it would all end. Inside, the leading priests and the entire high council were trying to find witnesses who would lie about Jesus so they could put him to death. But even though they found many who agreed to give false witness, they could not use anyone's testimony. Finally, two men came forward who declared, this man said, I'm able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. Then the high priest stood up and said to Jesus, well, aren't you going to answer these charges? What do you have to say for yourself? But Jesus remained silent. Then the high priest said to him, I demand in the name of the living God, tell us if you are the Messiah, the son of God. Jesus replied, you have said it. And in the future, you will see the son of man seated in the place of power at God's right hand and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothing to show his horror and said, blasphemy. Why do we need other witnesses? You've all heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? Guilty, they shouted. He deserves to die. Then they began to spit in Jesus' face and beat him with their fists. And some slapped him during, prophesy to us, you Messiah. Who hit you that time? Meanwhile, Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came over and said to him, you are one of those with Jesus, the Galilean. But Peter denied it in front of everyone. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Later, out by the gate, another servant girl noticed him and said to those standing around, this man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, Peter denied it this time with an oath. I don't even know the man, he said. A little later, some of the other bystanders came over to Peter and said, you must be one of them. We can tell by your Galilean accent. Peter swore a curse on me if I'm lying. I don't know the man. And immediately the rooster crowed. Suddenly, Jesus's words flashed through Peter's mind. Before the rooster crows, you will deny three times that you even know me. And he went away, weeping bitterly. Thanks be to God. Let's sing, let's stand and sing, God of grace, I turn my face to you. sit for the fourth reading.
The readings from Matthew 27, verses 1 to 10. Judas hangs himself. Very early in the morning, the leading priests and the elders of the people met again to lay plans for putting Jesus to death. Then they bound him, led him away, and took him to Pilate, the Roman governor. When Judas, who had betrayed him, realized that Jesus had been condemned to die, he was filled with remorse. He took the 30 pieces of silver back to the leading priests and the elders. I've sinned, he declared, for I have betrayed an innocent man. What do we care, they retorted, that's your problem. Then Judas threw the silver coins down in the temple and went out and hanged himself. The leading priests picked up the coins. It wouldn't be right to put this money in the temple treasury, they said, since it was payment for murder. After some discussion, they finally decided to buy the potter's field and they made it into a cemetery for foreigners. That is why the field is still called the field of blood. This fulfilled the prophecy of Jeremiah that says, they took the 30 pieces of silver, the price at which he was valued by the people of Israel and purchased the potter's field as the Lord directed. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. And let's stand and sing. Only by grace can we enter. Please sit for the fifth reading. Matthew 27, verses 11 to 31. Jesus before Pilate and the mocking of the soldiers. Now Jesus was standing before Pilate, the Roman governor. Are you the king of the Jews? The governor asked him. Jesus replied, you have said it. But when the leading priest and the elders made their accusations against him, Jesus remained silent. Don't you hear all those charges they are bringing against you? Pilate demanded. But Jesus made no response to any of the charges, much to the governor's surprise. Now, it was the governor's custom each year during the Passover celebration to release one prisoner to the crowd, anyone they wanted. This year, there was a notorious prisoner, a man, na man named Barabbas. As 
the crowds gathered before Pilate's house that morning, he asked them, which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Messiah? He knew very well that the religious leaders had arrested Jesus out of envy. Just then, as Pilate was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent him this message, leave that innocent man alone. I suffered through a terrible nightmare about him last night. Meanwhile, the Legion priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas to be released and for Jesus to be put to death. So the governor asked again, which of these two do you want me to release to you? The crowd shouted back, Barabbas. Pilate responded, then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? They shouted back, crucify him. Why, Pilate demanded, what crime has he committed? But the mob roared even louder, crucify him. Pilate saw that he wasn't getting anywhere and that a riot was developing. So he sent for a bowl of water and washed his hands before the crowd saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. The responsibility is yours. And all the people yelled back, we will take responsibility for his death, we and our children. So Pilate released Barabbas to them. He ordered Jesus flogged with a lead tipped whip and then turned him over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. Some of the governor's soldiers took Jesus into their headquarters and called out the entire regiment. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. They wove thorn branches into a crown and put it on his head. And they please, placed a reed strick, stick in his hand, in his right hand as a scepter. Then they knelt before him in mockery and taunted, hell, king of the Jews. And they spat on him and grabbed the stick and struck him on the head with it. And when they were finally tired of mocking him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him again, then led him away to be crucified. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The choir are now going to sing uh, a piece from Foray's Requiem. You'll see the English there, famous words about the Lamb of God taking away the sin of the world. <laughs>
Now we'll have our sixth reading. The reading is taken from Matthew 27, verses 32 to 54. The crucifixion and death of Jesus. Along the way, they came across a man named Simon, who was from Cyrene, and the soldiers forced him to carry Jesus' cross. And they went out to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. The soldiers gave Jesus wine mixed with bitter gall, but when he had tasted it, he refused to drink it. After they had nailed him to the cross, the soldiers gambled for his clothes by throwing dice. Then they sat around and kept guard as he hung there. A sign was fastened above Jesus' head, announcing the charge against him. It read, this is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. The people passing by shouted abuse, shaking their heads in mockery. Look at you now, they yelled at him. You said you were going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Well, then, if you are the son of God, save yourself and come down from the cross. The leading priests and the teachers of religious law and the elders also mocked Jesus. He saved others, they scoffed, but he can't save himself. So who is, is he, he? So he is the king of Israel, is he? Let him come down from the cross right now and we will believe in him. He trusted God, so let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. And even the revolutionaries who were crucified with him ridiculed him in the same way. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. At about three o'clock, Jesus called out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Some of the bystanders misunderstood and thought he was calling for the prophet Elijah. One of them ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, holding it up to him on a reed stick so he could drink. But the rest said, wait, let's see whether Elijah comes to save him. Then Jesus shouted out again, and he released his spirit. At that moment, the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, rocks split apart, and tombs opened. The bodies of many godly men and women who had died were raised from the dead. They left the cemetery after Jesus' resurrection, and went into the holy city of, Jerusalem, city of Jerusalem and appeared to many people. The Roman officer and the other soldiers at the crucifixion were terrified by the earthquake and all that had happened. They said, this man truly was the son of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Let's sing then. Stand and sing, here is love, vast as the ocean.
do sit or kneel in just for a time of prayer. So on this day of crucifixion, we pray for our world in all its needs. For Heavenly Father, you sent Jesus for the love of the world, to save the world. When I say, Lord, hear us, please reply, Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. So let's pray for God's church, the people of God throughout the world. We thank you for the witness together in this area of Bath this morning. People gathered to speak of your love, to pray over our city. We pray for all who lead your church, for our own Bishop Ruth, those appointing a new bishop, people across Bath in other churches um, and our, our land as we seek to serve you, to wash people's feet, to be a witness to your love. We thank you for this place, this church, all who come here to call on you, confess your name, inquire after you, be baptised, to worship. And finally, we pray for those who are mocked and persecuted for their faith. Our dear brothers and sisters who suffer. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. So may each of us in our vocation, our calling and ministry, serve you in holiness and truth. And now we pray for our world and its leaders. Elizabeth, our queen, in our own parliaments. Those who uphold law or serve in public office. Or strive for justice and reconciliation. Lord, for the nations at war, there are many who've sought to make peace, for which we give thanks. And Lord, they'll be hidden behind doors. Would you bless their efforts? We ask that your kingdom may come on earth as it is in heaven, in peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. So, God, our further Father, turn all our hearts to yourself and to your spirit of peace. We pray for those of other faiths. Lord, we hear this morning of conflict in Jerusalem between Jew and Muslim, or in India between Hindu and Muslim and Buddhist. Hearts are so broken. We ask for removal of blindness and bitterness of heart and for all Christian speakers and missionaries and people who seek to bring your love to the untouchable, to those who think you have no interest in them. Pray to sustain them as they speak to others and us in the mission to our own culture around us, many of whom have no faith at all. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. So hasten the coming of your kingdom among us. Revive your church, the coming of your kingdom. Now we pray for all who suffer. You may have those on your own heart and mind who are sick, struggling with old age. We're in time of doubt, anxiety, despair, in loneliness or fear. Prisoners and captives in our own day, victims of false accusations and violence. For refugees fleeing only you know what sometimes. For those who 
are suffering to the point of death, would you reach out to them? Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And so indeed, comfort those who mourn, who are sad, who suffer. And finally, we lift ourselves to you as we seek to follow you. Lord, as we come to your cross, we understand that you died for us, for our sins. And we thank you for that forgiveness. And we ask for the fullness of your spirit to come on us, that we may live for you by grace, that we may do to others as you have done to us, served us and loved us. And may we all come to the fullness of eternal life and the joy of your resurrection. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And so standing at the foot of the cross, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So we come to our seventh reading and I hope as we go from here it's a great encouragement to you all. a new covenant, and a call to persevere. The Holy Spirit also testifies and says, this is the new covenant that I will make with my people on that day, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts, and I will write them on their minds. Then he says, I will never again remember their sins and lawless deeds. And when sins have been forgiven, there is no need to offer any more sacrifices. And so, dear brothers and sisters, we can boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. By his death, Jesus opened a new and life-giving way through the curtain into the most holy place, and since we have a great high priest who rules over God's house, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts fully trusting him. For our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean, and our bodies have been washed with pure water. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm, for God can be trusted to keep his promise. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Let's humbly join in the closing prayer together and then we'll stand and sing when I survey the wondrous cross. Eternal God, in the cross of Jesus, we see the cost of our sin and the depth of your love. In humble hope and fear, may we place at his feet all that we have and all that we are, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs>
Let's go in the peace of Christ. Amen.